thanks for joining me again. I thought today I'd do a, a river scene. This is a clear water sensor, 15 by 11, Fabriano water colour paper, using a large Ron Ranson Ake and the, uh, all the usual colours you'll see below in the video description. So once I've got the paper nice and wet, I'm just going to go in with raw sienna and a little lemon yellow. Yeah, it's such a blue. But not too dark. In fact, we might, might just brush in slightly. Because it's brushy. I'm just trying to leave a light part down the uh, but I'm going to do this a different way, I think. Where I was originally going to do it. So I just get a sort of just a, a, a variation on the greens, but with a nice light area down the middle. And I want it green because it's good. It's um, it's all trees and stuff in the background. So I like, get some there. Just using the corner of the brush. Just very faint. So there's the horizon line about there. So I just want those faint there to create that sense of uh, depth and then it gets a bit more intense and darker as we come over to the side, each side. So starting on the uh, on the left, start to get a bit darker now. Payne's grey. And while I've got this colour on the brush, just going to be on the right hand side as well. And then I use the uh, the rigger then, just to put in a few So I keep getting distracted while I was trying to do that music one. Just very light. Yeah, another one on this side. I think it's Queen, I don't know if you could hear that or not. I used to listen to Queen a lot when I was a kid. These are just... That's enough of that. I'm going to do some bigger ones now. This is going to be a thicker one. Giving a... Something like that. And you see how quick you can put them in with a the hike. You're going to mess about like you do with the rig. Because you only get tiny little bits of paint on the brush at a time so use the hake and go straight in I can't quite get this sort of so if you, if you look at my brush you see how it's, uh, it's not exactly square I've got to get a new brush now I can't wait any longer the beauty of this is as it starts to dry it gets more and more different like you can see now it's really starting to dry now and because it's because the paper is dry, it brings it right forward, goes on a lot stronger, tones a lot stronger. There's a big, big branch going across there. Introduce a bit of burnt umber to it now, proper branch colours. There's a thick one, giving up. Let's 
Do another big one there. Glue it on. Something like that. Do you want to define this, this river bank a bit better? Not too strong. Choosing the corner of the brush. Of, um, in fact, I'm just going to paper stretch a bit, so I'm just going to pull it tight so I've got a flat surface to work with. There's nothing worse than when you, you're trying to paint or scrape, and the, the paper's sort of about that far from the from the board, and it, you're in and out, and it's, it's, a, it's a pain. So just scratching a few rocks. Top of the water is going to be about there. Um, just leaving plenty of the lighter area where it's the water sort of breaking. Maybe even a quick sweep here and there. And then the water's getting around a rock there. Rock in the water. And then there's a few more little ripples around there. I'll fill that in a little bit. Just trying to vary the colour just ever so slightly around there. And a few little, but leaving plenty of little white white areas that act just an easy way of doing a all the like the surf, the um, lots of rapids, and then just trying to vary the colour slightly. Maybe get another, another couple of little rocks in there. A few more over there in the water. Stronger branches now. Some real strong branches. So um, I've got a bit more water now. I'm getting plenty of uh, brushes quite wet now. I'm getting burnt umber, ultramarine, nice strong colour. And I'm going to get a real, real dark one in there. This one's going to go right, right the way over, right over. And just ground there. I might put a few rocks in there just to. Try and ground it. I'll be careful I don't overdo the rocks now because they're, they're popping up all over the place. And then the same on the other side. A big Another one down there. Just 
darken these areas up a bit. And it just adds a bit of these rocks just add a, a bit of texture to the uh, thing. Because I put the paint on thick, you can scratch them out straight away. You don't have to wait for the paint to dry. Which can be a bit tiresome. And I might go a bit of light red just to, just to vary it a bit. And just using the corner. And then, I'll do it. Uh, just some of down there, I think. Just a few bits of grasses in the foreground. Does it need it there? No, I'm gonna leave that bit open, I think. Um just stick a few leaves on the trees, I think. So I'm gonna clean the brush and then give it a good dry. And just sort of scuff it right up so you've got the airs going all over the place. And then just go into your, your leaf colours basically. Lemon yellow, Payne's grey, ultramarine, all your, your greens basically. And then be careful not to not to cover up everything you've done. So I, just, I don't want to I want to keep this fairly subtle actually because otherwise I'm going to cover up too much of the background. So much. A few bits of grass. The brush is very dry now, so I can do this knowing it's not going to come off off the brush and go too dark right in the distance. Um, I think a little. It needs. Uh, it needs a, a focal point. So I think just a little. Just a little figure, like fishing or something in the distance. So if I just sort of pines grey and lemon yellow, just like that, that sort of greeny colour again. Um, make sure that's dry before I put my finger in. Yeah. Bit of lead. the rod and then just, just a quick flick just uh, just something to uh, grab your attention really might even stick a couple of birds maybe I should put the birds um, not much room up there actually now. But there, you don't really know, I'll really notice them. I might just stick one. Very small. Something like that. And then, nice and dark colour. And then just stick your signature down in the corner. Not right in the corner because you won't see it once it's framed. And I'll call that one finished. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing, don't be afraid to ask any questions. 
and I'll see you again soon.